This tropical African country is set at the equator but has snow on top of its highest mountain, the Ruenzori. Uganda boasts of temperate climate and picturesque highlands. It also harbors the world's second largest freshwater lake, the Victoria, which is also the source of the world's second longest river, the Nile. These attractions, as well as its ancient famous interlacustrine kingdoms, have been an exploration destination since legends like Ibn Battuta, John Huntington Speak, and Henry Morton Stanley started the flood. Britain's famous wartime Prime Minister, Sir Winston Churchill, once proclaimed it as the Pearl of Africa in his book, My African Journey. The gateway into the country is Entebbe town. When one is coming in from the skies to land at Entebbe airport, one is given a teaser of what to expect of this beautiful country. There is little wonder that this picturesque town was once the seat of the colonial government. From the capital, the country is split into five major destinations. The east, the north, the west, the central and the islands. Each one a unique experience in itself. Traveling eastwards, one comes across the source of the River Nile at a place called Jinja. This is where Africa's longest river begins its journey to the Mediterranean Sea in Egypt. There are boat rides on the Nile, taking in the beautiful landscapes on the banks of the river. There are rapids further downstream, which are a major destination for white water rafters at Bujagali. At the municipal town of Tororo, one sees the Tororo rock, an irregular outgrowth from the earth, which is a symbol of Uganda's strange relief features on the eastern axis. However, the Tororo Rock is quickly dwarfed by the Elgon Mountains as one goes further east. The Elgon Mountains, complete with wild animals, are a popular destination for nature lovers. The Bamasaba people who live on the mountains add a colorful backdrop to the scenic beauty found there. They grow bananas as a staple food and eat bamboo shoots in a vegetable delicacy known as Kamalewa. They also grow one of the world's best coffee brands, known as Arabica coffee. This type of coffee is only found in a few places in the world, which include the Elgon Mountains and the highlands of Ethiopia. Tourists with an interest in coffee production visit this area for further knowledge and research on how coffee makes its way from the earth to the consumer's cup. Further on, along this eastern circuit, you will encounter evidence of the early history of mankind on the Nyeru Rock in Kumi. The people who now live there are known as the Iteso, a cattle-keeping people. The East is a journey into African heritage. Moving more northeastwards, one encounters the Karamajong people whose passion for cattle is very intense. They live in Manyatas, a collection of huts in an enclosure. In this region, recent paleontological excavations have revealed very early evidence of mankind. The visitor will also come across the Chidepo Valley National Park, a semi-desert savanna with a wide range of rare animal species. It is one of the many national parks in the country. Another high-altitude mountain, the Moroto, is found here. It is a favorite destination for mountain climbers. The Karamajong excursion is a rare tourist journey where one is often alone to ponder and wonder at Mother Nature in her most native form. Back, back 
the western part of Uganda is one beautiful wonderland. There are golden grasslands. They are grazed by the graceful Ankole cattle. Green tea estates in temperate climates. Undulating hills with terraced gardens. Thick tropical rainforests. And a snow picked mountain, the Rezoris. A journey to the west is an enchanting trip in flora and fauna. There are game parks, game reserves and forest reserves in this region. Two and a half hours away from Kampala, one begins to see the wild animals. Lake Mburu National Park is home to the zebra, that beautiful horse-like animal, so tasty to the lion. There are also numerous antelopes and bucks. Going more southwestwards, one will end up in the Mgahinga Mountain Gorilla National Park. And here you will climb the Mgahinga Mountain Ranges, which will be a delightful physical exercise and a walk through varieties of beautiful plants growing in a very cool environment. But the biggest trophy here is the mountain gorilla. Many visitors here come to track the rare mountain gorilla, which is found only in this part of the world. Veering northwestwards is windy impenetrable rainforest, another habitat of a few remaining mountain gorillas. It is a totally different experience here. President of Uganda, Yori Museveni, led a visual expedition of the CNN into this area to showcase the world's few remaining mountain gorillas, among other things. This placed the world's attention on the windy, impenetrable rainforest and exposed another side of Uganda to the rest of the world. Gorilla trackers have called this a very unforgettable experience. In southwestern Uganda, we come to Lake Bunyonyi, Uganda's deepest lake. A boat ride on the lake is an unforgettable experience. A picturesque and colorful sight of terraced Chigezi hills give the visitor a sense of living of a lifetime dream of encountering a perfect terrestrial beauty. Bird watching on the shores of the lake is a bonus for the visitor. Going on more northern, one passes through villages kiriographed with banana plantations and long horned cattle. Within this backdrop are beautiful crater lakes, a result of early earth movements and volcanic activity. One can take a boat ride or sit by the banks of one of these lakes, which will bring forth an immediate sublime feeling. One other water mass here is the Lake Katwe, a sole excavation site that dates back thousands of years. It is evidence of a great salt industry and trade that stretch all over the entire interlacustrian region. Further downfield, one comes across Lake George and Lake Edward. Two azure large peaceful waters separated by the Kazinga Channel. Here one can go fishing on a canoe, which is the main occupation of the people who live around the lakes. It is at the edge of these waters that one enters Uganda's second biggest national park, 
the Queen Elizabeth National Park. Once inside the park, the huge array of animal species will parade before you in their natural casts, some stopping to stare at the intruder with curiosity. The Queen Elizabeth is a majestic expression of the meaning of the word safari, that Swahili word now adapted by the English language to mean travel. At Mueya Safari Lodge, you will rest and eat like a royal as the beauty of Africa unfolds in front of you. Going on more and westward, you'll cross the equator once again and face the Rensori mountain ranges. When the early explorers were told of a mountain with snow at the top, they put it down to native nonsense, but history has absorbed them. Thousands of mountain climbers have made their way to the Margarita Peak, where it is always snow, as in the polar regions of the world. Making one's way to the top is a feat in itself. Going through a breathtaking hazardous terrain of numerous ecosystems, which goes through the dense mountain forest to the snow-covered peaks. Along the trail, one will see unique vegetations, glacier river primates, and wonder features such as gorges. It is like a summary of the earth here, and this is what has attracted famous people to the Rezoris. One of them, the Italian Duke of Abruzzi, took photographs in 1906 and wrote a book that was to make the Rezoris world famous. But the Rezoris did not have to be announced to be famous because it is the third tallest mountain in Africa. At its foothills is a vast expanse of natural rainforest, complete with chimpanzees, monkeys and baboons. There are also many varieties of birds. It is a good destination for bird watching, chimpanzee tracking and community walks. Still in the west, one can go on to reach the Semliki River, a meandering wonder. And then there are the Sempire Hot Springs, a two acre of bubbling steam from underneath the earth. People come here from near and far to bathe in the healing steam of the hot springs. Seven miles from here live the Batois, a three feet tall people whose habitat is the dense tropical forest. They are a subject of great interest to anthropologists, conservationists and human rights organizations because their pre-industrial way of life is being besieged by modernity. The West is also the mother of Uganda's kingdom culture. One time these kingdoms were one large empire known as Kitara, which split into five kingdoms, modern Uganda. Bunyoro, Buganda, Busoga, Toro and Ankole. The earlier four are active, while the last one is in abeyance. It was at the courts of these monarchs that the politicking that was to make modern Uganda took place. Here, people like Speak, Stanley, Lugard met the Kabaka of Uganda to persuade him to accept the overlordship of the British Empire, while Emini Pasha and Sir Samuel Baker tried unsuccessfully to wrest power from the Omukam of Nyoro. There are important monuments left in their wake to remind of the history of that time. Two particularly dominant figures of the time, Mutesa and Kavalega, are found in all history books written about Uganda in the 19th century. The former for inviting the white man into the country and the latter for fighting him. Their tombs are now important tourist attractions and destinations in Uganda. 
Kabalega is interned at Mparo, while Kasubi tombs where Mutesa was buried is listed among the UNESCO's World Heritage Sites. Uganda's heritage does not only lie in architectural relics and regalia of former monarchs, it is to be found in nature as well. In the heart of Uganda's central region at Mobende Hill, one finds a tree of vintage presence that is linked to an influential priestess known as Nakaima, who is presumed to have lived around the 16th century. The tree itself dates back to earlier times. It is believed to be the oldest tree in Uganda. This tree still serves as a spiritual shrine to the famed priestess and is much visited by both local and foreign tourists. A great many natural sites have been preserved, like the Nakaima tree, such as the rocks which serve as a spiritual destination for many believers. There are many such interesting rock formations throughout the country, with the mysterious caves to accompany them. On the rocks and trees you add the waterfalls, a myriad of them in maritime Uganda. Take the Seziwa Falls, 45 minutes drive from Kampala. Then there's the Sipi Falls in the eastern part of the country, famous for its attractiveness in addition to ancient myths about it. It is endowed with temperate weather that gives the traveler a good feeling while resting in the green gardens overlooking the falls. At Bigobia Mugenyi in southern central Uganda, the excavated remains of the powerful Chwezi dynasty, believed to have come from the Ethiopian highlands, are found. Here, excavators found iron implements, pottery, and other artifacts of great anthropological value. The recent history is also marked by the impact of Arabs and Europeans. These visitors who first traded in slaves, guns and trinkets left more of an enduring mark on the land and the people of East Africa. They also brought with them different religions. The Arabs brought Islam as a new way of worship. While the Europeans brought Christianity, Uganda today is the realm of the two religions. At Namugongo, there are Muslim, Protestant, and Catholic shrines to commemorate the famous Uganda matters. These people were martyred by Mwanga, a Buganda monarch, who was against the foreign influence on his subjects as brought along by the new religions. He ordered them to denounce their faith at the pain of death. They met their death with great spirit and enthusiasm and have since been beatified by the Roman Catholic Church and honored by Uganda, which has set aside a national day in their memory. Pilgrims from all over the world converge at Namugongo to hold Holy Mass in memory of these matters. A martyr's trail has been established tracing their journey to Namugongo, where they met their death. It brings glimpses of spiritual Uganda to the travelers. <laughs> Traveling down the Nile, one encounters the Karuma Falls where the river's momentum is much more furious as it hits the rocks that separate northern Uganda from the south. Amazing to see, but this is nothing to compare with the experience of the Makshon Falls, whose picture is backdropped with a vast national park, another of the country's game wonders. The Makshon Falls are in the middle of the Makshon Falls National Park. A ride downstream the waterfalls is the breathtaking experience.
a real parade of the crocodiles, elephants, buffaloes along the banks of the river, welcoming the visitor to their habitat with a lot of curiosity. Here also marks an ethnic separation. The people of the north are Nilotics who migrated from Sudan and southern Egypt. Legend talks about their warlike traditions which were greatly exploited by General Gordon, Emin Pasha and Sir Samuel Baker in their effort to colonize sub-Saharan Africa for the Egyptian Khedives who ruled between 1820 to 1880. There are a number of forts that were left by the colonialists along the Nile regions of northern Uganda. Major towns in this region comprise Lida, Nebi, Gulu, Arua, Ajumani, and Koboko, which are set amongst the Lango, Alul, Acholi, Madi, and Kakwa groups. From this, Uganda has had three heads of state. The North is a very religious area with Christianity dominating religions here, followed by Islam. On the Victoria are the beautiful Sese Archipelago, islands where nature has been kept, for the most part, in its original state. The tropical forests, the golden veldts, and the fishing folk on the vast Lake Victoria have kept the original picture of Africa intact. This place offers an enticing retreat from the concrete bustle of modern cities. At Ngamba Island, one of the islands of the Sese Archipelago, a chimpanzee sanctuary was established. Here, a visitor can closely watch these friendly and playful primates in this exciting environment. The roundabout upcountry trip would inevitably bring you back to Kampala, a 113-year-old city which started with Lugard's fort. It later on engulfed the other hills surrounding the fort. These were previously seats of government for the reigning Buganda monarchy. The seven hills each have a landmark. Old Kampala, where the first British flag was raised to proclaim the British protectorate over Uganda, has a grand mosque. Kibuli Hill is where the first national mosque was built. Namirembe Hill is where you find the seat of the Anglican Church in Uganda. Rubaga Hill, which was the Kabaka's palace at the visit of Lugard, now holds a Roman Catholic cathedral. Makerere is where Uganda's first university is found. Mulago Hill is where the National Referral Hospital was built. Kololo is the country's premier residence. And while Nakasero is where the state house is and most of the government offices. center is where one finds the hotels, the exotic food restaurants, the cinemas, and the shopping malls. The National Theater, an important cultural point, is located right in the center of Kampala, next to the Parliament of Uganda. Kampala. 
One can trace the history of Uganda and take a peek at the life in Uganda at different generations at the Uganda Museum, found barely 10 minutes drive from the city center. The outlying hills is where most Kampala people reside with their own famed entertainments. And when it is night time, Kampala opens up. Kampala by night is a different spectacle from what one sees during the day. That is when all the different backgrounds fuse into the fun that is commonly Ugandan. This cheerful spirit was unknown 21 years ago. The country was then a melancholic place to be and bad governance reigned throughout the land. There was no security of anything and the economy had gone to the dogs. A protracted people's struggle led by Yori Museveni, the incumbent president, restored sanity into the country. Today, every five years, a new government and legislature is voted into power by an electoral process. This stability has foreseen investor confidence and an awakening of Uganda's economy from a dark limbo. The combination of peace, stability and good governance has brought about a steady, fast growth in all areas of the economy and Uganda now ranks high as an investment and tourist destination. The Pearl of Africa has renewed its twinkle, drawing from all the wonderful gifts nature bestowed upon it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 